Hey, Bomb Squad, if you're a comedian or a podcaster looking for an affordable website solution with a modern look, then we recommend Pucks Hub. With a Pucks Hub website, you can set up your new website in minutes with easy to use pre built templates. Pucks Hub websites are customizable and can easily be integrated with other platforms like Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. The best part? Pucks Hub plans are only $5 per month. We use Pucks Hub for our website at the Art of Bombing podcast, and we think you should too. That's why we partnered with Pucks Hub to offer listeners a free 60 day trial. Head over to PucksHub.com to subscribe and use promo code AOB pod at checkout for your 60 day free trial and then pay only five dollars per month after that take your career to the next level with your own pucks hub website today dan Bublitz comedy productions dates i'll miss my cat that's what's coming up on the art of bombing episode 282 My friend Dan, he's got a podcast, cause all comics need a podcast, and nobody had a podcast called The Art of Bombing, so Dan went out and bought a tape deck, who knows why he bought a tape deck, now cast don't get played on tape decks, but Dan is from the 80s, so hey there all you funny jerks, come talk to Dan about your work, tell him all about your worst times, it's The Art of Bombing. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Art of Bombing podcast. It is me, your host, Dan Bublitz Jr. And with me, as always, is my co-host, co-producer, and cohort, Mr. Josh Shirley. How are you doing, Josh? Doing good, Dan. I got a I got a corporate coming up. Oh, you got a corporate and coming up? That's fantastic. I, I do. And it, so here's, here's I, I, I can already see it kind of not going well. And I'm, I'm not trying to be negative. Ooh, I, you're and putting I, bad and energy I, out, man. You're putting that well, bad know, mojo man. out. Now, uh, I let me rephrase. I'm not necessarily <laughs> saying that it's not going to go well, but there are a couple of ingredients so far that seem a little, uh, a little disturbing, Uh-oh. or uh, you know, definitely need to. That needs to be an area of focus for me before i actually go and do it it's an opportunity to improve the performance how about how about that like there that's you go. a better that's a good way to look at it an opportunity right. to improve the performance and what's the opportunity to improve the performance so well there's like and it, so i do some uh some some training and some coaching yep. with sales people and and i do that in mixing in my stand up and, and all that and we got so talking to the lady yesterday and she's uh, what we call an enablement lady. So her, her job is to like train. She's like the internal, like it's her responsibility to make sure people have the help and training they need to do their jobs internally. Exactly. So okay. she I goes out mean. and she finds clowns like me to go up and, you know, teach. So I'm going to go do it. But, you know, the there's a team of people who I'm training and those people have a manager who are who's not on the like enablement team he's just a dude who leads the team and he does not appear to want me there at all oh <laughs> no so we were all on a call like yesterday and she's you know like okay this is josh and he's gonna i'm like hey nice to meet you man we're gonna be doing this and he's like uh okay i mean i guess i guess if you want to do something like that i mean that's fine i mean we're kind of you know, so I kind of got to the point where I was like, hey, man, I I can't help you if, if you don't need any help. So so what like do you how are things going right now? Right. And so I just was asking him direct questions about it. And he seemed to open up a little bit there and we seem to make a little headway in it. But it's just one of those things where like it's not clicking all the way. It's yeah. like the, the Starbucks lid is like on the cup. But it didn't make that satisfying kind of sound it makes when it like gets all the way on there and it, you know, and I'm like, I'm carrying my coffee and I'm going to put it in my lap, right? I'm not sure if it's going to stay in the cup. That to me, and this is just an outside perspective, but to me sounds like his ego was getting a little hurt because they're bringing in a trainer from outside. 
Dude, you... And that, you know, as a manager, he's probably like, oh, they don't think I'm a good manager. My training's not good enough. You know, that kind yeah. of thing. That is Which... a solid read, dude. Like <laughs> I was on a, I was on the phone with an hour for the guy with the guy. I just spoke about it for two minutes and you already know. Exactly yeah, what I'm like, yeah, that's what that sounds like to me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, comedians are not the only ones with fragile egos. <laughs> right, that's right. Turns out everybody has those uh, fragile, fragile uh, egos. But that was that's a great that you're doing that corporate and you're you're starting to do more of that. And that's a good transition into our guest this week, who yeah. is the four time returning four time. Let me see, four, four time. Four. He's been on the show more than me. Four times. Nathan Holtz returns. Right. Uh, my good buddy, if you've listened to this podcast from early on, you know Nathan because he's been on it three times before. But you also know that Nathan and I uh, are good friends because I talk about him a lot. On His name comes up a lot on the podcast. We've been buddies for a long time. This is a fun episode because yeah. we got to tell some stories about our beginnings and not just in comedy, but the yeah. beginnings in our friendship. <laughs> I appreciated hearing that stuff. It was good, good background and talked a little bit about some early days. I think some newer comics will get a lot out of this episode. Yeah. And, and I feel like, especially us talking about that friendship and how it kind of came up to be because early on there was a little bit of competitiveness that could have ultimately caused us not to be friends at all, you know, and had we not become friends, we there's a lot of things that wouldn't have happened in comedy, you know, because he, he's my one of my co-producers for Snow Jam. We've done a bunch of other stuff together like those things. We, you know, we've collabed on other projects and those things would not have happened if we, you know, if we let things go a different direction when we first met. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a yeah, good little good. lesson for that. Yeah. You know, this last weekend I had some gigs uh, this last couple of days. I got to go. Uh, to Mo or not Montana. I went to uh, Nebraska for what I thought was a corporate gig. And it turned out it was just a gig uh, that my friend Kyle, who normally who does a lot of corporate type gigs, that's why I thought it was a corporate gig. Uh, he booked me to open for him to feature for him at uh, it was the Heritage Days in Alliance, Nebraska. And I had a great time. There was nice. there was a carnival on Main Street right in front of the event center where we were performing. So I got to go, I got the sweet spot where I did the, the feature, you know, I got yeah. the feature, I did Ooh. 30 minutes, I got paid nice. very heftily, you know, for the gig, it was a very nice gig, that's why I thought it was a corporate, because it paid very well, nice. uh, then I got to go out, have a, a fry bread taco, I had a deep fat fried uh, Snickers. I had, yeah. I was at, a Papa was in heaven at this If game. you weren't a diabetic before that, you <laughs> are now. <laughs> well, it was funny, and I'm going to probably work on this as a bit, because uh, I was after the show, <laughs> I was joking with uh, Kyle. We were sitting there because they had karaoke after the show, and we were hanging out for a little bit, and I was like, you know, my, I'm going to have like the worst true Hollywood, true, true Hollywood story ever, you know, because, you know, a lot of comedians get found, you know, from drug overdoses in their hotel rooms <laughs> with prostitutes and drugs. They're going to find me alone with my comic books and OD'd on sugar. <laughs> Snickers wrappers all over the place. Half eaten. Oh, my God. Fried <laughs> Snickers. Oh, like gas Twinkie station wrappers. taco wrappers all over the place. It's going to be oh the my God. saddest. I've seen this a hundred times, Phil. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, we got we got a good laugh at that. We got a good laugh at that. that he was funny. like, "You need you need to talk about that on stage." I was like, "I think I I probably will." But the reason that I was bringing up that gig, not to you know, it was a great gig, and a couple of reasons I brought it up. Uh, one of the reasons was is after the show, multiple people came up and thanked us for coming out and doing the show and saying they made it a point to say how much they needed to laugh and they didn't even realize how much they needed to laugh and that it was just a great uh, a time for them and it helped them, you know, get it, you know, with things in their life. It just gave them a break from life. And I think it's important. It's an important lesson in comedy that we, we often take for granted. You know, we think we do, you know, 
you should be doing comedy for the audience, but it's easy to forget yeah. that and let your ego and you wanting to do your own stuff and, you know, do whatever. And you lose track of what the real purpose of doing comedy is. And that is yeah. to make people laugh and bring them joy. And so it was a nice little reminder for me about that. that. Cause you know, That's I feel perfect. like I was kind of getting on this track of getting off, you know, getting lost on that. Why am I doing comedy? Why do I drive three hours to do gigs? Why do I go do an open mic an hour away to get better? So at these shows, you know, all those things were going through my mind. And I was just like, this is why, because people need to laugh now more than ever. And that's what our job is, you know, bringing that joy to people. And the other reason I'm bringing it up is because last week we talked about Mary, uh, Mary, blah, 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 blah. All right, let's try that again. We talked about Wendy Mayberry's <laughs> new book that she released, The Gig Diary, which if, if you haven't picked up your copy, there'll be a link in the notes this week again, because uh, I want, I'm, I'm really promoting it for her. Uh, she's not, this ain't a paid advertisement. She's not paying me for any of this. Uh, but she is a good friend of mine. We you're, collab you're actually using the product is what I heard. She's like, we like I, off air. Yes. That's and that's the point. Like, I'm, yes. actually, I'm actually getting something out of it. Exactly. And that's why I'm bringing it up. And that's why I brought those shows up that I had this week. I got last week. I talked about her, her gig diary that I got it in the mail, but I, it was eight and a half by 11. And I think I made a comment about, oh, I wish it, they, you know, my only thing is I wish she would make it smaller. She got other feedback from not just me, but other people about making it smaller. And she already made a version smaller. And so then I ordered it and I got it. And I got to start using my gig diary this week. And I think it's an excellent product. And I think every comic should be using it because, you know, you can write down your set list. You can take notes about your performance. There's all kinds of little extras in there. You, you can put your set links in there, how much you're getting paid, the mileage you drove for the show, you know, what the venue was, you know, who booked it and other all kinds of details that you can keep track. Yeah. And it's a good not just for keeping track of like how much you're spending and the mileage and all that stuff, but it's a good keepsake. So if you start doing this and you fill out all the sections and like 10 years, you can open one of these and you'll be like looking through and be like, Oh, I remember doing that show with Josh Shirley at, you know, St. Joseph, Kansas, you know, like the, those memories will start springing into your head. So yeah, if you don't have a copy, I highly recommend go, going and getting a copy and now she has a journal size version six by nine it's a fantastic book and i'm going to keep pushing it for her without being paid because <laughs> i use it so all right that's the plug this week i'm not even plugging my own stuff i'm plugging that that's what i'm doing i'm plugging yeah. that and uh because like i said if you believe in a product you'll support it we believe in that product so Go get it. And I think, are you ready? Should we start this episode I, with Nathan? Holt? Let's get into this. Let's get into it. All right. Here is our conversation with Mr. Nathan Holtz. Enjoy. It's the art of bombing. My unprofessionality is because I wasn't ready. This is spontaneous. We didn't we didn't plan ahead. This wasn't scheduled. A professional would always be ready. You didn't get the email with the time and all the info on the in-studio recording yeah. with the link to the form you need to fill out. Is there really a form? You're going to fill out a form, yeah. I've never filled out a form. Well, you you will now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm a four-time I'm in the four-time club. I that am doesn't the four, matter. I am the four-time club. You, you, you're, yeah, you're the only one. I'm the club. You're the club. It's I have, you. I have platinum membership. Yourself. <laughs> you and yourself. <laughs> you're it. Yeah, four times club. How's that feel? You're, you're four times on the Art of Bombing podcast. You currently I, hold the record for most appearances on the Art of Bombing podcast. Yeah, the most appearances on the the comedy the comedy podcast where you suck like let's talk about let's talk about, let's talk the, about the times that you suck yeah yeah let's do this let's see how many times uh how many times i can suck yeah yeah i've i've Turns sucked out. i've sucked the most <laughs> the most times the most times i've sucked I mean, that's not true all morning i've been kind of trying because you said let's record and i was like where, yeah, I kind of threw it on you. Where, I was just like, you're you're in town, you're passing through, visiting, we're hanging out. And I was like, you know what? 
We should do a, we should do an episode. Yeah, just throw one out there. Let's just throw one out there. Yeah. It's a very spontaneous. Episode 299. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Probably sooner than that. Oh, okay. Probably episode 282. 282? 282, yeah. It'll probably come out in a couple of weeks. I like two eight. My reserve, my reserve was is is low. Is so. it running low? Running yeah. low. Who so do you got? Is... Let's tease it. Who do you got coming? I got some people. Okay, uh, they'll tease. They'll tease human beings. I well, I can't. By the time this comes out, those episodes will be gone. Oh, fair. So <laughs> we're not fair. teasing anything. We're <laughs> this episode this would is have a to post come... teaser. <laughs> This is a delayed, delayed teaser. It's like a teaser trailer from 95. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I should see. I should see that James Bond film. <laughs> so you've been, you're on a little mini tour. A little mini, uh, little tour. mini tour, mostly through Colorado. Mm-hmm. Been on the road for a few days. Now, how's the tour been going so far? Um, per, per, d- Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any content for for this tour. Um, I, I I will talk about how I bombed routing on this trip. You did kind of. Your routing wasn't yeah, very good. I, Even I was like, "What are you doing?" Yeah, I was sure you didn't answer my text messages a couple times uh, till later, and so I was like, "Oh, Dan's disappointed in me. Dad's Ooh. disappointed." <laughs> I was just like, "What is he thinking?" <laughs> this routing my ambition uh outweighed my my uh common sense yeah that's i mean it happens it happens it's because you went from rapid city to delta colorado on the fourth of july weekend yes yeah and so it what well for people who aren't familiar with that geography just to give you the people listening a heads up or kind of an insight on that take the holiday away even take the holiday away but it's already like a 11, 12 hour drive on its own. <laughs> it's a ten and a half hour drive straight through. But you have to stop for gas to yeah. make stops. So I always, anytime yeah. you, you, I never go by what it is if you drove straight through because nobody's going to be able to drive straight through yeah. without a stop. Unless so, you cannonball run it. Exactly. But even yeah, yeah, <laughs> that would be interesting to see somebody try to do that stuff. But but yeah, so it's already a long drive. Yeah. And then you throw in Fourth of July weekend. So I throw in the July Fourth weekend, and I throw in it's an early call time, like it's an earlier show. Ooh. So what time was, was the show? Seven thirty. Seven thirty. Oh. Yeah. What time did you get to where you needed to be? So Rapid City, Rapid City is. I, I w- um, well, Rapid City ain't that far from where you live. I mean, it's no. It was like four and a half hours, five hours. Um. I left at 6.30 in the morning. I was trying to leave at 5.30 in the morning, but yep. I, I set my alarm for 5. Turns out it was 5 p.m., <laughs> not 5 a.m. Uh, luckily, you I woke bombed up. bombed on the setting your clock as well, your yeah. alarm as well. Yeah, no, I bombed. I, there's been some, <laughs> some mishaps for sure. It'll happen. It'll happen. And so I left at 6.30, and then I got there at 6.20 p.m. Oh man! So you pretty much just got there and had to get ready for the show. I timed my I timed my my stoppage. I uh, I was out of the car in those twelve hours, twenty eight minutes. Total. Total. How many stops was it? Um, two and a half. Two and a half stops. So the first. How do you have a half a stop? Did the, you just kind of roll through? The first stop. <laughs> pee out the door. <laughs> I realized I needed caffeine. I realized I was going to need caffeine. And I saw a Runza. Um, mm-hmm. and Are I, you a fan of the Runza? Because you saw that we have a Runza here and you were all excited. I, I, excitement is not the word. Well, you seemed excited. but I, <laughs> I've not eaten, eaten there. I know it's a popular... Uh, chain in in Nebraska, but that's all I know about it. It's it's fine. Uh, okay, it was the only restaurant on the road that I was driving through, and so I was like, I need caffeine in it, and probably go to the bathroom. But I have my clock set to Central Time, but I'm we're in Mountain yep, over here, so we're an hour behind. So I thought it was like three minutes to eleven, but it was actually three minutes to ten. And they don't open till eleven. Oh, so no. I pulled in the parking lot, hit the door, and then drove okay, off. Okay, that makes sense. So that's that's a, how you got the half a stop. That's my half stop. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, which I included in the twenty eight minutes. <laughs> um, I took a selfie because a, a friend of ours has a joke about Runza, and so 
I, uh, I took a selfie of Runza and I said, Hey, they don't open till 11. <laughs> goes, I'll get on it. So that's funny. Um, yeah, no. And then it was, it was crazy. Cause I got stuck in, in 4th of July traffic just yeah. outside of Denver. And that was very frustrating. Well, to be fair, I mean, yeah, that, that can be very frustrating, but I feel like anytime you're going through Denver into the mountains, it just always seems like there's traffic on the weekends because people are going out into the mountains yeah. to camp. In the wintertime, it's to go skiing or, in, you know, skiing, mountain biking, camping, yeah. white water rafting, like all those white things. White people shit. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So there's a lot of that that happens on the weekend. So weekend traffic is already bananas. Yeah. And then you add in the holiday weekend. Fourth of July weekend <laughs> and like a lane closure and. Yeah. yeah. And then not to mention Dead and Company is in, like, the Grateful Dead is playing. Oh, I mean, that's why you, you – I mean, essentially, that's why you kind of put this tour together. That You had – you decided to come yeah. to this concert and decided that you should maybe work around it and turn it into a tour, right? Well, but I had wanted – I've I've been wanting to come to Colorado for – I've never performed in Colorado. I've only been to – I've only spent hours and hours and hours at the airport. So I've never <laughs> actually been – in yeah, because if proper. you're stuck at the airport, it's not like you can like leave. You can, but it's very expensive because yeah, it's like the airport is in a weird it's, location. It's like out of town. Yeah, it's it shouldn't be called Denver. No, it shouldn't. It should just be called uh, Middle of Nowhere Airport. Yeah, because yeah. it Colorado really, Airport. Yeah, it's, exactly. Airport. That's what yeah. it should be, Colorado yeah. Airport. <laughs> the so I I didn't you know I've been trying to get over here because we mm-hmm. were going to go on tour you yeah, know, we were, were, yeah, yeah, yeah we were yeah 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 we were but we were going to start here and, and so i took a break from comedy touring yeah well not comedy but touring yeah and so we uh so when that happened I, when, when you decided we weren't when we we mutually decided, yeah decided right i mean we, it's it was, mostly me i mean i wasn't stopping you from going i just said i don't think i'm gonna go yeah well so, and but, we just we didn't book anything we, were, we didn't no we yeah, were very we, we we said we were going to go on tour and then we did zero work to try to make it happen. Yeah. And then it got to the and it wasn't because we weren't booking anything. That's not. I just was like I need to take a break from touring and it had nothing to do with yeah. the work we weren't putting in. It was just <laughs> I don't want to do it. I just don't want to do it. Yeah, I was yeah. just like it's too much work. I just don't want to do it yeah. <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah. And talking to me for more than an hour at a time is Oh, yeah, I yeah. know. That's why we're we're keeping this short. We're going to record for 15 minutes and call it good. We're, this is going to be a mini episode. Your it's your fourth appearance, but it's it's a mini appearance. Mini, this mini is the appearance. half. You'll have three and a half appearances on the Art of Bombing. <laughs> Yeah, just like my stop at Runza. <laughs> That's right. You're coming to the door, and you realize it's locked, and yeah. you're going to have to turn around. <laughs> Same thing that's happening. <laughs> realize I should be managing a Runza, because the only car in the parking lot was a really nice Beamer M3. And I'm oh, like, wow. oh, okay. Okay. I see you, Runza management. Yeah. You know, the guy who's opening the door. Probably so. owns it. Probably. Probably. Maybe. 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 That could be your thing. That could be your thing. <laughs> I think I want to get into the White Castle business. Oh, there you go. That's a cheap franchise. I don't feel like there's a, enough of them around either. I agree. Like, they're not... They're kind of far and few between. Yeah. Like, maybe maybe in the Midwest. I, I shouldn't speak. I don't know where, where I think they're on originally the, based I think on the coasts, they're... They're not in California. Like really? they're not. I don't even think there were any in California, if memory serves me right. That can't be true. Yeah. Oh wait, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. I don't think so. We're gonna. Can please comment on the video or, <laughs> or the, the audio? Yeah. Tell I would us, like. Tell us if if you live in the West Coast and you have White Castle, please let us know. Tag us. <laughs> tag us. Tag us. Let us know. At Debub Comedy. Also, White Castle. I am Pod. open for sponsorship, and I will take. I will take a, yeah, a uh, trade as for franchise fees. Exactly. He will uh, he will trade sponsorship. And when he says trade sponsorship, he means you can sponsor my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I the the what were we talking about? Oh, we we're talking about your your you traveling from Rapid City. Yeah, we got we got sidetracked with the half a stop. I was like, how do you have a half a stop? <laughs> so yeah, and then I I stopped for gas just outside of Denver. And um, I was so mad because then the next gas station off of was ten cents cheaper. Oh, that's gonna that happens all the time. It's so frustrating. But I think it might have been eighty five instead of eighty seven. 
and I don't, we don't have 85 in South Dakota, yeah. so I don't know if I can put my it in my car. I'm sure. Oh, I you can. can. I, as somebody that has lived in both places and travels frequently back and forth. Yeah. When I'm in Colorado, 85, it's just unleaded, and then or super unleaded, mm-hmm. and then when I go back home. 87 is the lowest, so that's what I put in. It's usually the cheapest because it has the 10% uh, ethanol. Only difference is 85 doesn't have ethanol usually Mm. down here. That's the main thing. But you can run it both. So now you know. So it's that foreign. Although you drive a hybrid, so that might be different with your car. But I don't know. That that would would be the only thing where I wouldn't know necessarily on that. But I know with my car, I use either or. Depends on where I'm at. I'm going to have to check it out. I'm I'm, going to do some Google D. Deep, de- deep sea diving. <laughs> Do a deep dive on what kind of gas you can actually put in your car. <laughs> um, so yeah, I got down to Delta, Colorado. It was a fun show. A um, little light because of the summer, but uh, we had a lot of fun. And then they, you know, they got some people in the bar to come out. Um, out so, was it outside? No, like into the other room. Oh, Sorry. okay. No, you. I, yeah. Well, well, I mean. After, you know, post-pandemic, there are, you know, outside shows aren't uncommon now. <laughs> you know? If I so drove I know. 12 hours to, perform to do outside. 30 minutes outside, <laughs> I I would be very upset with myself. I hate You only did 30? Comedy. Who I, was, I was did, there more on the show or like what? Yeah, it was, it was like a showcase. Oh, okay. Headline. How many comics? There were four before me. Oh, okay. I didn't realize there was that many comics out that way. They're all. To be it's, I'm pretty sure it's all of the comics. <laughs> probably. I'm pretty. I shouldn't sure. laugh because you're probably right. Because yeah, I think it was all of them. And they, they, you know what? I was impressed because all of them had under about three years of experience, and they they kept the room. No one, you know, no one really destroyed like uh, destroyed the room in the sense of like no one ruined the show. Yeah, yeah. You know, and well, when you have that much new talent, a lot of times that can happen. It can happen, but I feel like it, when you're in a smaller scene like that and it, you, you and you don't have as, you know, the sh- you don't have as many opportunities for stage time, I feel like the comics put more effort into not, you know, trying to ruin it. Yeah. Like that's always how I always felt about Sioux Falls back in the day is that the talent was for the most part pretty good mm-hmm. you know and when you do shows with local talent the shows were always pretty good because there wasn't very many of us and we didn't want to ruin it <laughs> you know yeah. what i mean like yeah. we wanted to make sure it was the best show yeah it was a higher <laughs> stakes yeah exactly well exactly higher stakes cuz yeah. put on one bad show in a smaller scene and then you know those people are never coming to a comedy show no. again and <laughs> no they're not <laughs> No, it was. It, it, they were really solid. Like for for being as green as they were, like, and I don't, I don't mean to throw shade. It's just like the no, fact not, of the matter yeah. of like, they're they're just new. And you don't, well, yeah, you just don't know what to expect either. With they you know. they all they all did really well. Um, yeah, it was, it was great. I got to meet um, a Gerbert. Or, oh. Uh, yeah, Gerbert, Gilbert, Gerbert. Uh, he's like the the puppeteer, the puppet. The Christian Puppet Show. Hmm. Um, he did like a Christian Puppet Show. He's like kind of internet famous after oh. whatever. But yeah, I, was I, he on the show? No, his son is a comic. Oh, okay. And I stayed at his, his son's house. Oh, and they were staying there too. Oh, yeah, nice. it was really strange. And then I took an ice bath for the first time, like yeah. a like a cold plunge. Yeah, um, that was it was crazy. Are you gonna do a cold plunge for? Have you ever thought about doing it for the Special Olympics? Because I know I have that. that's like a big thing in South Dakota. Yeah, I don't. I think they do that in Watertown. They don't do it. Oh, is that the only place they do? Yeah, because it's a Watertown fundraiser. Oh, I thought they did it. In I think more they places. do a bunch of different polar plunges, but it, like in South Dakota, they I think they only do it. Oh, in okay. Watertown. That that could definitely be, but it's not like Watertown's that far. But we know how you feel about driving to Watertown for things. We learned that, you know. 10 years ago, 13 years ago. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, I was just telling that story. I was just... Watertown's got a bad taste in your mouth. <laughs> was... It's not true. It's They've since washed it out. Yeah, okay, good, yeah. good. Yeah, I've, yeah. Always, I've always have a good time in Watertown, except for the first two times I went to Watertown. <laughs> Which is funny, because uh, the first time was I was involved. Where but we not met. That's where we met, yeah. But it wasn't my... I wasn't the one that... No got you to come to Watertown cuz I didn't know you until you came. No, I had I had that I, was uh, I was told to go to I was you led were to believe, yeah. You were fooled. I was 
You were fooled to believe you were going to a show. That's actually that was a and really that, good lesson for me to ask more questions. Ask questions. <laughs> Don't be afraid to ask questions, right? Yeah, Cuz like uh I thought I was going to be paid to do a show in Watertown and uh the, the this booker that reached out to me didn't didn't have a car that could get there. So he's like, "Hey, you know, would you drive?" So uh, what I should have asked was, "What kind of show is it?" Yep. He would have told me it's an open mic. And I Hopefully. Yeah. I mean, I feel like he might have still lied. Yeah. Because, I mean, at the end, when it all came to fruition, not just that show, just his character, when 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 we realized his character, not good character. We got in some trouble for yeah. lying, cheating, yeah. Yeah. Com- like very bad stuff in, in comedy, in the comedy business. So yeah. I could totally see him still lying to you <laughs> based That's after fair. that. So. That's fair. <laughs> So I drove, um, and I I was like, "What time's the show?" And he's like, S- "I think it starts at six thirty-seven." Oh. And I'm a, I'm an early person. That's yeah. one thing oh, I yeah. would, I would stress. Like, oh, I always try to be at least an hour early for a show because it sets the booker's mind at ease, right? As, as a person that's put put on a lot of shows, when comics don't roll up till five minutes prior to the show. It's I'm, so frustrating. I'm panicking. Unless, you know, unless they communicate that they're, hey, I'm running late or yeah. I'll be here at this time. But otherwise, and it even helps. that, even that, <laughs> no, helps, no, no, but... it helps ease the burden, but it's still frustrating for yeah. sure. But, but what's worse is when they don't roll up till like five minutes before the show and yeah. don't say anything. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? Like you have no idea because you really don't. You're just like, oh man, I want, you know. The no last thing you want to do is like, Call them six times. Like, where are, are you? you? Yeah, exactly. You know, that's the last thing you want. You don't want to be the needy booker or the needy producer, but also like get there. That's know? one thing I've learned too, w- w- as far as like booking shows and producing shows. Now, is that I tell comics like when I, excuse me, when I do like group chats or whatever for whatever the shows are, I say the show starts at this time. You need to be here by this time, unless mm-hmm. you know if you have to come late. You need to make sure you let me know. But this is the time comics check in. Yeah. And it's, you know, every comic on the show, I want you here at this time. Unless, yeah. you know, you, whatever. And There's, if you set that expectation, that's great. Yeah. Just because, well, but that's going back to what you were saying. Yeah. I've learned that because of, Dude. you know, things like that happening. It's yeah. like, okay, you need to lay that out there or comics will take that for granted and just show up whenever. <laughs> yeah. So we go so we go to Watertown, which is it's not that long. Uh, but when you're new to comedy and not traveling a lot, that's it's a long time to drive an hour and a half. Yeah. Um but I thought I was getting paid. Yeah, you and you thought you were doing a show. And I thought I was doing a show, I thought I was getting paid. We get to the bar, I see open mic starts at eight PM. So we're two and a half hours early for an open mic that I'm not gonna be paid for. And I was livid. Oh, I know. I remember. I was because I was kind of like I was like, man, this guy is kind of a. Uh, at that time, I was like, man, he's very just dis- like very dismissive and and very kind of pissy pants, like yeah. grumpy. But I didn't know all that yeah. background into what happened at that time. I th- I just was like, and I was I was holding jerk. it in. I was holding it in because I like. The but last it was thing- still showing. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not. I don't have. You were a, very passive aggressive. Let's. I don't have a great way, but... poker face. <laughs> um, I also thought I was king shit of Fuck Mountain. So I. Well, there's yeah. I mean that ego that we get when we first start. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, wait, you know, you have one good show and you're like, oh, I'm the best. Well, that's uh, how I, I. Six months into comedy, I'm like, I'm moving to California. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I moved to California, and I was like, the first I time like, I met you is the first time I heard an album recording of yours. Oh yeah, you, you oh did, that's right. You did an album recording. I did. That was the I've night been, I was recording because it was going to be my. It was my last show there. I've I remember been, that. I've been a part of all of your album recordings except for two. Oh yeah, no, probably three. No, mm-hmm. there's three that you haven't been a part of. Oh, okay, I know that for a fact. All right, because I did two in uh, California. Okay, that did not. Get really. coming, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I didn't release them because that's been always my thing is that I'll record albums 
and then I don't like how it turns out. Mm-hmm. Just whatever. I'm, I, I mean, I guess it's probably perfectionism. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you get. Yeah. I mean, you know, because you're trying. You're you've been talking about recording an album and doing a special for like five years. You're still like working yeah. on, and you still haven't done it yet. You're still yeah. in the in the pre production. Yeah. So you know all about the perfectionism on making sure it's perfect. I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> You're like quit putting me on the spot, guy, <laughs> You know, I'm trying not to call you out on your shit, and you're on here. I'm just trying to relate. We're being. I'm trying to be relatable. That we're both perfectionists on things. <laughs> Only difference is, is I'll, I'll, I'll be. I'm a perfectionist on the post production, the pre production. Like I try to, you know, and then learn over time. Now yeah. I'm a lot more particular on that, but. I you know just go for it and do these recordings and yeah. then and then after the fact I'm like yeah that just wasn't good whatever and, and I learned from you that pre production is very important <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah, that's why yeah. my finally the, the the recording I finally did release actually wasn't terrible because yeah. I like put some planning into it fixed put some, it in pre put put it in some yeah exactly I put some <laughs> effort into it. <laughs> But it's funny that you mentioned that because I did release that album, and then, on your Patreon, right? No, 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 no. no, no. Well, yeah, I mean, eventually I re- released a lot of those recordings. No, but you I should meant, check out his Patreon. Yeah, that I don't keep up with because <laughs> uh, there's no patrons. But uh, no, I'm talking about that the album recording that you were at. That did get released. Like I did distribute it. I had okay. download cards. Like I was promoting it, and then. After about a year in comedy, and after I moved to California and saw yeah. some of these other comedians, because that's for me, I was like, oh man, I'm a great comedian. Yeah. I'm six months in, I'm recording this album, I'm gonna do big things. Yeah. Now I'm gonna go to California and I'm gonna be a star. Yeah. And then I went to one open mic, just an open mic in yeah. California, and I was like, I suck. <laughs> <laughs> I seen like said, and it wasn't like any of these comics were fit, but some of them are doing big things now. Yeah, yeah. People that I, I started doing comedy with when I moved to California. But I was just like, oh, yeah, I suck. And then I was like, this album has to, this is terrible. We need to, this needs to be wiped from the internet. And as far as I know, it's scrubbed, been scrubbed, yes. Scrubbed clean. It had been scrubbed. I mean, you may, if you dig deep enough, you might yeah. find some of the tracks somewhere. But I'm the, pretty sure I did a pretty good job of scrubbing it. Just, yeah, you, you, you hear of someone who bought your album and you, you just show up at their house with a magnet and scrub their hard drive. <laughs> yep, that's exactly it. I've got people just like watching yeah. for it. Yeah. Somebody does a download and yeah. we hack their computer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's You've funny. been blitzed. Yeah. <laughs> That's the message that comes up on the screen instead of like you know it's a pop up that says yeah. you've been blitzed. And then just a link to your Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that's a hey, that's a good way to get subscribers. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a you, light box, a little light box action. If you want me to never hack you again, subscribe to my Patreon. <laughs> I love it. Also, videos from the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I forgot that that was the the time you were there, but if that that's right because that would check out because the last show that I did there before I handed it over because that was my show that I ran. Yeah, so I had the open mic and then I had like a, a regional headliner come in, so I would do a feature and a headliner, mm-hmm. and then you know they you know I'd pay them and I got them a hotel room or whatever, and then we do the open mic before. They do their show and then whatever. And that was the last one I did before I moved to California. I was getting ready to move to California the following month. So Mm -hmm. I was handing it over. And that's right. You came on the last one. So I forgot all about that part. Yeah. So you're about to train, you're about to record your album. And I'm being Mr. Pissy Pants in a, in a curmudgeon mood. And then, but I was, I was so upset that I had been bamboozled. And then we drive home after in almost silence. And which I won, by the way. You did win. You won because that was the thing about that show is that the open mic we kind of put it in. We kind of made it a open mic contest where if you won, you got to come back the next month as the feature, Mm -hmm. and it it, and it did pay, but not a lot. Like it was a. I did not get paid. Well, but that was before I I wasn't running it then. Yeah. I. Maybe I did. I don't remember. But I think you probably did, but it wasn't much. Yeah. So it wasn't worth two trips. Yeah, 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 I yeah, can see yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, uh-huh. you didn't get paid enough to make it worth two trips. Yeah. And so <laughs> the, I won, 
And so the whole ride back, I'm like, I don't want to go back to that fucking place. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know, it's like I didn't. I was mad that I won. Not that I was, you know, I was just more of like, I have to come. Not only did I did I get tricked into going the first time, now I have an obligation to, to come go back, back yeah, again next month. Um, <laughs> and but I'm glad I did because I got to meet our mutual friend Will Spotted Bear. Yeah, at that show, and so Spotted Bear and I have been, you know, friends ever since. Oh, well, that's great that that's how you met Spotted Bear. Yeah, was through that show. Cause, yeah, because yeah, that's the thing with that too. Like that room was, you know, it was interesting. You know that what we were doing because it was a good way because it was like a good middle area you know the mm-hmm. t- location because yeah. I, I was able to get comics from like Fargo and you Sioux know Falls in the Sioux Falls yeah yep. kind of in that region or whatever but it's uh, that's another thing I remember about when we first met is that you won the contest and I was like I was like wow you're really good and I was all like mm-hmm. excited to, that we met and I was like oh you're awesome and you were just like <laughs> you, you still had cranky pants on yeah very passive aggressive about it. And so I got this. It's funny because you said earlier that you had a lot when we first met and kind of were hanging out or becoming friends that you had a lot of uh, kind of, you know, you, you treated me like I was your enemy. So like I was a, like a friend, a friend, of, of, a friend of me. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you like I was your competition. Yeah. And I had, you know, outside of I was like, man, this guy's kind of a dick. You know, I didn't care. I was like, oh, this is great. This guy's super fun. Yeah. And love this. You know, that's great. Yeah. Great talent here. <laughs> Yeah, and then and then you just started like from California. You got me like like my first road gigs, you know, yeah. uh, with with Spencer. And so yeah, but the to end the story to put a button on the Watertown story, we we finish um, driving back. You're... We drive back <laughs> almost silence the hour and a half, and then uh, I drop him off at his car, and I'm waiting for him to chip in for gas, and he doesn't, and he doesn't, and I don't say anything. Cause I'm a, I'm a wuss, but like, but I was like, I think I did say something. He's just like, Oh, I'll have to hit you back later. Something uh, like that. Something like that. Like, I was like, you. Yeah. Trash so bag. you got duped into it and then didn't even get any gas money, which is which... so like, if someone's driving me, like I'm always going to offer. Oh, to absolutely. Chip in. You know, some, sometimes I don't expect them to take well, it. I tell you what but... though. Yeah. I'm, but if they ask you to drive, yeah. like that specifically to me, like it's one thing if we're deciding as collectively, there's a group of comics and we're like collectively deciding, hey, let's go check out this mic in wherever. Yeah. Let's go, you know, we're doing the show together. We'll just commute, you know, and then somebody offers to drive. You know, you want the expectation is that you want other people to offer yeah. to pitch in. But if they don't, whatever. But when you're asked to drive, yeah. that's a different expectation. My that's, car cannot make it. That this. is saying, okay, I can't drive, but you, I'm asking you to drive, so yeah. I'm going to chip in for gas. And when I do that, like, if I'm ever in a situation like that where I can't drive or, or yeah. I need somebody else to drive me somewhere or whatever, not only am I going to pay, I'm going to pay for gas if I'm the one needing the ride. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. I and that happened to me. I had a, my car broke down. I didn't make any money on this show. Like I had to have a friend drive me from here on to Minneapolis yeah. to do a show because it was booked way in advance and my car broke down. Yeah. And I had no way to get there. I couldn't take Tara's car at the time because she needed it. And so and my friend, he had this big old freaking van, yeah. just gas guzzler or whatever. And but he offered to drive me and I didn't want to like screw up, you know. My uh, standings with the booker, with mm-hmm. the booking company. So I was like, well, let's let's go. So all the money I made on that from went the show gas. went to gas to, yeah. to get me there and back. Yeah. <laughs> You've had the worst car trouble, too, I for have, gigs. Uh, I think you have. borrowed my parents' car. I did. Yeah. 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 That yeah. was awesome. Yeah. Same. Uh, God, my parents are great. Your parents are amazing. Uh, yeah, it was the same car that uh, I think that, that, yeah, that same car broke down. Yeah. It was uh, that same car. It was the that... Volvo, right? No, no, no. No. I got rid of the Volvo like mm. way before that. That was my Hyundai, my Santa Fe. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because what happened was is uh, like the head gasket or something went out. Mm-hmm. That was the first one. And it shouldn't have taken as long. Like, I don't know. The, the place that I took it to get fixed, they took forever to get it fixed. Yeah. Like, they just kept giving me the runaround sure. when it was going to be done. And then, you know, I, I swear it took like four or five months before I finally got it back. 
to where it was working good because yeah. they tried giving it back and then the check engine light would come on and like all this you know whatever mm-hmm. so it was like yeah they just kept giving me the run around and i don't think they ever really did a good job at fixing it or whatever but yeah but it was that same car my catalytic converter went out when i borrowed your parents car <laughs> catalytic converters man yeah another expensive fix yeah. and not that necessary well yeah yeah i mean well they are because yeah without them your car won't run very good no yeah it just <laughs> I mean, makes it run well yeah <laughs> the uh, the last before i sold my car my catalytic converter so failed and they're like you can drive it you're just not gonna be a good car yeah like, and it's not a good highway car either no you yeah chunking, <laughs> chunking along yeah the yeah so that's that's i would say i would say i bombed on routing on this yeah on this uh this tour but well the first part the rest yeah. of your routing ain't so makes more sense you know now because yeah. you're 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 staying in a you're staying up in avon and most of the shows that you're on for the rest of the week, mm-hmm. outside of when you leave to come home, are in that area. They're yeah. all pretty close to that area. What, like an hour, 45? Not even. Not even. That's it's like, it, they're like, I'm like in between the two shows. Oh, okay. So you're like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. So like halfway between oh, okay. each gig. Oh, that's great. Because then you're, yeah, you're like about a half hour or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah that's, yeah, that's that's perfect. So that case, you're fine. Yeah. But it was the, just the, but the, the one. Friday it was to just Saturday. The, one. the Friday to Saturday was the one that didn't make sense. Well, and it sucked too because I couldn't do any of the hanging in yeah. Rapid City because I was like, I gotta go. I gotta get go right to yeah. I gotta go right to bed. I gotta go right to bed. I gotta get up. It would the the hotel. The guy above me would play like he would play a lot of different genres, but he would not play the best representative of every genre. Like, <laughs> like, like all night, I was hearing like like DMX and like corn and <laughs> like just like bad new metal oh that's um, funny but it was it was a it's been a it's been a fun trip i've been having a great time and then i got to see dead and co well yeah is, i mean that was kind of the instigator of the trip yeah i had tickets to their wrigley show and then my father-in-law turned 70 um and i could not miss that so i needed to be there for that because he's family and awesome and so i was i had to sell my chicago tickets and but this is their last tour, so or at least what they've said. Yeah, um, we hear that a lot from musicians and comedians and artists, where they're like, "This is the last one," and then yeah, and then suddenly they're back on the road. They're getting pretty. This is the last one for sure. <laughs> but yeah, the... they are getting. And old, and but... and even like a couple members didn't sign on for this tour because yeah, they because they're like, yeah, we need to, we can't tour like that, and so. That was it was a great opportunity. It was one of the best shows I've ever I like I, I want to give it some space, but it might be one of the best shows I've ever gotten to go to. Um like yeah, it was incredible. But so yeah, I'm having a lot of fun tour. I th- I think that's what I'm learning too is like sorry, I keep oh no, that's not your foot. No, you're not I thought I was I thought I was playing footsie with you. No, I got my feet away. I see you trying. <laughs> I'm like <laughs> Well, trying to get work your way to a fifth appearance. Yeah, trying to get trying to get five. That's for the after show. <laughs> That's the bonus episode. The bonus. The yeah, I'm, I've been trying to figure out how to have more fun in the traveling aspect lately, mm-hmm. because because like you know grinding oh, yeah, grinding for all these years because yep. we're both what thirteen years in. Yeah, yeah, thirteen, fourteen. Yeah, I'm going on thirteen. Yeah. Yeah, and we start. You started like a month before me. Yeah, or, or a month after. I don't remember the exact. Because yeah. when did you start? It was May. May of whatever year we started. Well, I started in 2010. Yeah, that's about that's about it. Okay, then you you're a couple months before me then, because I started uh, September of 2010. 20. Yeah, because yeah, it would have been because the show that you did where we met was May of 20. Uh, eleven. Okay. So, so you got a few months. Of that. You're you're about six months ahead of me. Four oh. or five months ahead of me. All right. But well, that's funny because in career, I'm about a year and a half behind you. <laughs> Whatever you do, I do a year and a half later. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I'm just gonna wait and see what he what he messes yeah, no, up, gonna... so then I can not. <laughs> yeah, it's smart answer. move. Smart I'm just, move. Just learning. Just learning from Dan. <laughs> that's you know. That's the, that's a good play. That's a good play. Yeah, sit what back and wait. Yeah, just see what happens. 
<laughs> just copy your coattails. Yeah, there we go. I'm hey. the I'm the chi- I'm the wish version of Dan. <laughs> <laughs> the the uh yeah you're, but, yeah you're talking about though trying to have more fun when you do. Yeah, this. I'm yeah. trying to have more fun, like just doing something to. Do you not, find that it's hard to do when you're like? Doing like a, like when you're on a tour and there's so many like rogue because you don't unless you can really unless you really do a good job with your logistics and your your routing and yeah. stuff it's hard to like like have fun because you got like you do the show like for Rapid City yeah. it's a good example you don't get to hang out with anybody you do the show you have to go to bed because you got to get up and then you mm-hmm. have to drive all day and you can't really make stops along the way because you got to go because you got to go you got to get to where you're yeah. going and so it's like. Because that's been one thing for me that I find, too. It's like, I want to do more things when I'm on the road, but it would be nicer if I could just, like, go to one area. Yeah. And, like, and I've been thinking about doing this where now, you know, maybe going and spending, like, a few days in some of the other other comedy scenes. Like, maybe going down to Austin for a week or, yeah. or out to L.A. for a week where, you know, I can work during the day, go hit some shows at night. But also, if I want, I can go do some fun stuff yeah. as well. Because it's harder to do the fun stuff when you're... That's kind of what I'm doing with, with Colorado right now. Like, I'm doing, you know, I'm kind of centrally in Avon yep. and then hitting the things around. Um, that's But I'm able to, you know, go out to eat with someone or... Uh, come see you, go yeah. to a concert. But yeah, I'm like I'm trying to like Do you have anything fun planned for the next few days? I'm gonna go golfing. Okay. So that's I don't I don't have it planned, but I, I'm gonna find a golf course and I'm gonna go golfing. Yeah. Um and then, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely chill in the the place I'm staying. Um yeah. That's... I didn't know if maybe you had some sites that you were like, oh, I want to go check out this museum or no, everything's kind of closed with yeah, the, holiday. the holiday. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I, w- I really wanted to spend like the, I was hoping to spend more time in Denver with this trip, but I, I ended up booking everything outside of Denver. <laughs> everything but Denver. <laughs> so, yeah, this is kind of the everything but Denver tour. Actually, I'm calling it uh, Dates I'll Miss My Cat. I saw tour. that. I thought Adorable. that was a very fun. Yeah, um, that's funny that you you know you, you say dates I'll miss my cat uh, when you have a child and wife. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, can I talk about that for a second? What child I, and wife? Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I so I try to leave them off of social media. Oh yeah, that that's smart. Um, it's good to have some some privacy. Well, it's just that's not their decision. Like, so I try to keep my daughter off the internet, like, um, on my end, Mm -hmm. you know. So, like, people always ask for pictures of my daughter and, like, or want to see her. Like, I have like two year old pictures, you know. So they like because it's weird. Oh yeah, it's strange. I imagine. Like, I'm friends with a bunch of strangers on Facebook, which I'm happy about, right? But it just means I have to keep some of that thing. You do. And I think that's, you bring up a good point. It's funny because I was listening to Mark Maron's podcast with uh, 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 Kyle Kinane was on it. And they were talking about that, how Mm. there's some things that they just leave off of social media to kind of have a private life. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, you got all these fans and then they get to the point where they think you're their friends. Yeah. And they, you know, start they, they almost cross the line of, you know, the boundaries, I guess, if you will, because yeah. they feel like you're they're your friend. Yeah. And that happens when you're sharing everything, you know. Yeah. And so yeah, it's definitely good to like have some things that are not for the internet. Well yeah, and my, my daughter's four four years old. She can't consent mm-hmm. to her picture being on the internet like Mm -hmm. she doesn't know what that means and i would want to protect her so it's you know there's only a few on there but like the i john c Riley was on w wtf and marin asked him about his kids and he said very directed he was like they are at the age at which i can they can't make the decision for me to disclose information about them yeah. Right. It, he says it really well, yeah. like rehearsed very well. Like, and it probably was rehearsed because he yeah. probably gets that. People probably ask him that, and he's oh, just yeah. like, "I'm gonna shut this down right away." Yep. And it, it it's it was it was it was stern. It was direct, and it was uh, it made a lot of sense to me in that moment. Mm-hmm. And so 
like right before we had the kid, I kind of listened to that and it was like, oh, that makes sense to me. So I try to keep the lives separate. And so that is why it's I miss my cat. Yeah, but it's her. still funny because yeah. you could still saying I miss all the, the dates, I'll miss my wife and kid. Yeah. You can still do that without it being, yeah. uh, you know. Yeah. Without it, you know, actually putting them on the internet. It's yeah. just a fact about you that you have a wife and kid. Yeah. It's not like you're putting them in it. But I know. but it's still but I get where you're where you're coming from. So it was it was funny, but also I didn't have to like, you know, do all that other stuff. Yeah, for sure. Well, we're gonna start uh we've been talking, we've been catching up, this is great, but we can't I mean we need to hear about a recent bombing story. I feel like it, there's gotta be something that you can a story you can tell. I don't know if I, I, I haven't. Or a bad show. It doesn't have to be I a bomb. Yeah, I haven't bombed, bombed recently. I got buried by a feature Ooh. recently. Yeah. It was New Year's Eve. And I booked um, this guy who was very excited to have me. And he paid me a, a significant amount of money to come and do the show. Um, so I was pretty excited about it. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to get a, get one of my best, you know, opening acts i can find like somebody who mm-hmm. shouldn't be opening for me and we're gonna have this killer show and so i had luke johnson great host uh i had him host and then i had tyler walsh who's it who's i abs- had a feeling that's who you were gonna an absolute was. crusher yeah just an absolute beast and uh so he goes up in nebraska in a town that hosts rodeos oh yeah like it is a rodeo yep. town. Like right next to the bar was the rodeo fairgrounds, and uh, on New Year's Eve, drunk people. I I mean I don't think there was a single pant being held up by not a belt buckle. <laughs> <laughs> it was a belt buckle town, and and so he demolishes, just connects with them, and then uh, oh I have another story that is complimentary to this one. So um, the the uh he goes up and then i just can't connect like i i did okay people laughed whatever but when the merch table came around it was just people swarmed on tyler and just it was they're like why weren't you headlining you know have you ever did oh yeah 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 i I remember getting that as a feature and hating that yeah that thing yeah i've never heard it as a headliner and uh, it hurt. It hurt. It hurt real bad. Uh, it's a big uh, jab to the old ego. Yeah. Well, no, I know he. I know he. But crushed. no. But yeah. I know he crushed. And and you know everyone did. It was a good show. Like it was a great show. But like, I just I hadn't been beat so bad. Uh, not that it's a competition, but I got beat. I got yeah. tore up. And uh, yeah. But before that, I was in the. Sh- I did another show in Nebraska. It was a corporate. And it was for a firehouse. And they hired me to do, they wanted a three-hour show. Jeez. And I said, no. Yeah. That's I said, if you, want, if you want more than an hour and a half, you should hire a DJ or a band or anything like that. Because that's going to keep people's attention. You should not do anything longer. And so they hired me. And then after about five months later, because they booked me almost a year in advance, uh, five months later, they added another comedian so they added another person to do another hour and that comedian brought an, a feature so he was going to do 40 that other guy was going to do 20 right and so we get there now they want two and a half hours and they're going to take an hour break oh my gosh this sounds or a half yeah 40 minute break and so me and me and the other com- comic have to provide the sound or provided the sound and so we put everything up and we're waiting for the other comics. And I'm like pacing, just like, who took this gig? Who is it? And I met him. He's a cool guy. A uh, very great comedian. And we were trying to figure out, he's, we're, we're talking like, what do we do? How do we fix this? And in my mind, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty upset. But I know I took the gig. I'll take the bullet. So they went, we, everyone did shorter sets. Mm-hmm. Everyone did... Um, it was supposed to do shorter sets. So the guy that was supposed to do 20 was going to do 10. My feature was going to do 15. And then he was going to do uh, 30 or 40. And then I was going to do an hour. Um, 
or uh, another 40. And so it came out to a little over two hours and 20 minutes. That's how mm. we kind of yeah. work it out. The host goes his time. Um, the guy he brought goes over time. Uh, and then he goes, and by the time he's leaving the stage, the crowd has been drinking for two and a half, three hours, and they are not listening. Oh, of course not. They are not listening. And so I go up there and I have to do 45 minutes with a crowd that's been lost. Like the comic went longer before me because he couldn't dismount. He was, yeah. Cause they and were, I hate when, when comics do that where they don't give up. It's like, you're not, you haven't got them this you're You're this far in and you haven't got them. Oh you no, know, no. He just kept getting interrupted. Well, on his final oh, joke, gotcha. on his final oh, joke, okay. he just couldn't get out. I see what you're saying. I thought it was because I hate when I when comics do that where they tell a joke and it bombs. No, no, and they and that well, I can't go off on that note. I gotta you know try to get that big laugh, and then they just keep digging. No, he was he was doing great. So that's it. it literally happened at an hour and a half of the show, and so I go up and I do the 40 minutes, and no one. I'm not. I'm getting the front row a little bit. Uh, I'm trying to do some shutting down. I've also like decided I'm just not going to interact with the crowd because I've, I've lost control yeah. and I get them a couple times, but I don't, I don't get them. Um, I get off stage and the comments were, the comics were very, it was like, that is how you do that. That was, that was crazy. And, uh, I get a review from the, from the booker, from the person and the review is, is five stars. I was like, all right, cool. Wasn't the funniest, but was great to work with. <laughs> Wasn't the funniest oh, wow. comedian of the night, but was great to work with. Oh, man. Oh. What a so, punch in the gut. So that guy came to the other show where Tyler Walsh opened for me. So he got to he oh, got to no. reinforce he, that comedian. He saw it he twice. He saw it twice. One not my fault, the other one my fault. And now he will never hire you. Yeah, that's fine. I don't ever want to work for him again. I I had like ten out. I had like several correspondents saying, "Do not go over an hour and a yeah, half." Yeah, I know. Yeah, and but in those situations, there's nothing you can do. Like, no. if these people who, uh, you know, when they book shows and they want a certain way, and you try to talk, yeah, I mean, you would you would hope that they would listen to you because you're the professional. But when they don't, it. You can only do you can only do so much. You can just do your part, you know. So because you're right, because like yeah, with comedy you can't even two hours is pushing it. Like that's too long. Yeah, it's way too long. Yeah, too long. Especially when especially when it's BYOB and people are bringing five foot coolers next to their (laughs) table. Right, like it was it was insane. It was a fun show. The food was good. All that blah 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 blah. But like, man, it was. It was rough. <laughs> it, it sounds was, like it. It was rough. Oh yeah, definitely have those gigs. Well, let's get let's wrap up. Uh, since you've been on the podcast, some of the formatting has changed a little bit. So I know. I know. Yeah. So we're gonna do the the last couple of questions. The uh, first one, we, you know, you got to tell some stories of some bad shows. Let's hear about what one of your favorite gigs that you've done so far. Um, doesn't have to be the best gig. Just a gig that you. Thought I did was. a I did a fundraiser for. Um, a friend of mine had passed away and I did a fundraiser for the, um, the, uh, uh, special, um, special needs, um, portion or of s- the school that I used to go to that oh, okay. he, he was a paraprofessional and oh, so okay. in his name we donated so we could essentially, uh, help with that program. Awesome. And so, um, I don't know if it was my best show, but it was the most meaningful. His parents were there and I got to talk about those um you know i got to tell some stories about him and i and so that was uh that's probably beautiful. my favorite show that's beautiful yeah all right i love it well the last question is uh we now have the art of bombing get pumped playlist doesn't have to be a song to get you pumped for comedy just get sure. you pumped what are you adding what are you adding to the playlist uh is neil neil young's heart of gold on there i may but i doubt it I really, I really love that song. All right. Oh, oh. You know what? No. Okay. I'm sorry. That one. Oh, right, well, what's what's the other one? It's I mean, a, I'll add them both. It's Valerie 
by the it's a cover of the um it's a cover of the the uh oh, what's her name um go to rehab oh of amy winehouse yeah it's the brothers comatose brothers comatose yeah it's a little uh all right little cover of that song by the brothers comatose all right sweet where can people find you direct them at Nathan Holtz, N A T H A N H U L T S. All platforms. Uh, my website is nathanholtz.com. Excellent. Well, hey, this has been fun catching up. Thank you, buddy. It's good to see you. I love you. Love you too, buddy. Shaklackity. This has been a Dan Bublitz comedy production. Roar. <laughs>